February 11th, 2019 for you. And we're going to talk about not what Dr. Gwaine wrote because he wrote poetry, which nothing wrong with poetry. Go nothing read the poetry. Yes. But I, got it. I have an artsy side, apparently. But but we're not going to read oh, poetry because it would be so, <laughs> it would be such a letdown from, <laughs> such a, from man. reading the actual it's, words yeah, you gotta and read. hearing Dr. Gwaine's voice. Unless he, re well, I guess no. if you read it, that would be the same, uh, wouldn't I it? I think it was written to be read, not... It was written to be not read, read, not to be read aloud, not to be heard. So okay, that's maybe a better. We way we do it. want you all to watch. I, I wonder why. To, I need to see if anybody's logged on here. Well, I I have zero over here, and zero. I think it has something to do with not getting the announcement. Oh, there we go. There they are. Okay, now we have them. Francis says they all jumped she at likes once. My shiny blue shirt. Oh, Francis this is watching. This isn't the shiny one though. Francis, you can call in using Skype, which I think <laughs> you may have done once. Oh. So. The, uh, How do I get to YouTube so I can the see Skype people's... ID is in the description of the video, and you have to use the comma and the periods to make it work. And we do have the Skype on over here. There we go. We're ready to go. All right. So when you guys call, you will be on to Fine. talk. And the subject is doctor referral patterns, which Man. actually, Francis, you could talk to us about doctor referral patterns. That would be kind of cool. And PA and nurse practitioner referral patterns. That's right, because they also make the referrals. All right. So, so Brio, yeah, Bianca, all, all of our uh, normal people, can I Bianca. Corner? Yeah. Hey, excellent. we're glad to have you watching. Those of you who see this when it's not live, we're actually communicating with people who are yeah. chatting in during our live video. If you want to get live videos, you subscribe to the channel and you hit that little bell icon. And then you also will get notifications when we go live because we do like almost every week. Interact with us too. Interact. <laughs> That's because cool. we enjoy that. And some people even call in on Skype using my Skype ID that's, that's in right. the description. In fact, somebody tried last week. He wrote back and said he's going to try it again. Oh, okay. Excellent. Uh, I don't know if he'll do it this week, but uh, was it Michael? Um, I don't remember. I, 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 yeah, oh, I'm man, trying to remember. But, but, but he did write afterwards. I'm that sorry. He was trying, so. <laughs> we, we are prepared for that. Yep. All right. So we need to talk about the referral patterns. Um, yes. This is business. Medicine is business. That's true. With the current setup we have here, not, it is not business. Not only do we treat people and have relationships with patients, but we need to run a business too. And, and we have relationships afloat. with other doctors and refer patients to other doctors. That's and right. that is what keeps a specialist in business and able to pay the bills is having a referral source coming into their practice. And primary care doctors like us, family medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who are making the referrals to the specialists, providing them a living. Yep. So it's a big deal. Um, so what are some things that would determine who you refer to? Who I refer to? Well, insurance is the biggest one. So if you look at a uh, patient's insurance, you want to make sure it's someone within their network. So um, often... Often people don't know what's who's in their network. Um, they'll, they'll they kind of leave it to us. Yeah. yeah. So so the, you essentially that that boils down that takes us back to types of insurance. So there's either HMO um, insurance or PPO uh, insurance. And HMO uh, insurance is within a network, uh, a group of doctors who are with under that HMO umbrella. So so they have a very uh, like not narrow but but a, a certain doctors you can refer to. And then. Uh, side, the PPO, you can essentially go wherever when you have a PPO. Mm -hmm. um, so you can choose wherever you want want to go. And and some people do. And, and we uh, honor that request. We, yeah. um, and we, we send them where they, they want to go. Um, yeah, where do we want to go with this? Like, So the, yeah, the, the HMO, people can still go to a doctor outside of the HMO, but there's some really strict contracts sometimes as far as wording of the contract, I mean. Right, yes. So that it, it makes it so that we don't readily write those referrals to people outside of the network. Right. Um, because these contracts are kind of strict sometimes. Um, we will usually, still say, yeah, go ahead and go to that that specialist. That That's fine. But you may have to pay for it out of pocket. Yeah, typically an HMO will not cover an out-of-network doctor unless they do not have that yeah. specific doctor within their network. Yeah. Now, somebody, Brio, actually asks, what if you don't have insurance? That's actually a great question. That's actually why we're bringing this up. Um, it is? Yeah, yeah, it is. 
you don't know this, but it. <laughs> you just took over the show. <laughs> okay, I'm so, listening. Yeah. So, um, so if you don't have insurance, uh, cost and value is a very important thing. So you want to get to a doctor that's not going to be expensive. Oh, that's um, where this is going. Okay, you see, you see where I know. I'm, I know. You see where I'm going. I remember. With this. Uh, so, so often that that is something we take into account as primary care doctors. Not everybody does. There are doctors who just say, oh, "I'll refer you wherever. Who cares? Um, I'll refer you to my friend who is the most expensive doctor in, in in town or whatever." We we don't do that. We have our close associates because they they won't be friends with us. Yeah, yeah. We don't. That's have why that. <laughs> us lowly primary care doctors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but we. Um, we discount are always, Dan now. Discount Dan. Go see Discount Dan down the street. To have your knee done. You want to see Discount Dan. Yeah, that's Dan. right. He uses wood instead of steel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you want to get value. And, and value essentially means the best care for the cheapest price. And, um, and that's what we're always looking for. That's what we provide, uh, in, in our opinion. Yeah. So uh, the best way that we see that is through independent doctors. Yes. So... Uh, so we are independent physicians ourselves. We um, are not under a, a big medical foundation. It is us. us we have a too. relationship with one. We do. We do. We are under a um, an IPA, which is an Independent Physicians Association. And the big foundation uh, likes offering the option of independent practices to the, the patients who have insurance with them because that way they're able to appeal to a broader selection of patients, those who right. want to go to the big office that has the big name on it, and those who want to go to a, a private, more intimate office like ours. Yep. So, we, yeah, we contract. We're glad to get their patients, and we take good care of them. Yeah. And um, because we are smaller, we have fewer nurses, fewer doctors, fewer yep. um, nurse practitioner, uh, mid-level um, PAs, uh, our overhead is less. So we can, um, essentially, if you're a cash pay and come to our office versus another one, you are going to be paying much less. Uh, I think it's that about true. half as much in the research that I've done. Now, that, this does take us to a Dr. Green Knight blog post. What was it there called? That was a good one. Uh, why to choose an independent doctor, I believe. Where he actually, you actually gave why money you for our community, right? You, you show how much yeah, we charge. Yeah, I actually called o up uh, various groups, either the, uh, the big medical groups versus the small independent groups, and asked them how much certain things cost. I did it with, um, with like a pseudonym? mammogram. <laughs> yes, this is, yeah, no. <laughs> Dr. Green Knight. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I checked out mammograms, a regular yep. like basic office visit, and then labs as well. And uh, and you, it's the difference is pretty drastic. It's striking. Yeah, you should check it's, out that one if you haven't. And, and if you, it's um, scandalous. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could say yeah. <laughs> it is hasn't been shut you know, down we, yet. We're, we're, <laughs> we're joking about it, but it really is a big deal. I mean, a a big deal, and people. Uh, independent doctors like us know it all too well to to see a patient who has an explanation of benefits. That's the form that the who gives you the explanation. Is it the, the insurance? insurance? The insurance it gives it to you after you go see the doctor and you pay your bill. And it or tells you how much payment. they've charged you and how much they're paying them and how much they're paying. And we've seen that form. Patients have brought them in from our competition. Yep. And we have seen with our eyes that for the exact same billing code to the insurance, our company is getting twice what we're getting for doing the exact same work on the patient. Yep. Because they have bigger... Uh, yeah, you probably wonder more, why. why. More bargaining power. So because exactly of that, it. they can... Um, when they come to the bargaining higher table rates to negotiate from, with from, Blue Shield, yeah, Blue Cross, the Health Net, whoever, they can say, hey, we're going to walk. And they have. They've done it. I mean, oh, yeah. We've seen we've, it. We've all heard uh, in, in our area when... All Sutter of a sudden, all the Blue Cross, Blue Cross people yeah. can't go to a certain health system. And it will go on for a year or two until they come back to the table and they're able to strike a deal. So they're not afraid to walk and say, yeah, your 20,000 patients we're taking care of, they have to go find somewhere else. That's strong negotiating power against the insurance. Us, what do we say? Um, you're 400 uh, patients, <laughs> um, sir. We'll have to find another place. Uh doesn't come across the same, does it? No. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So they say, no, we're, so no, the, we'll, so we'll give you no, this we're much. not going to pay you more. <laughs> we'll, we'll pay you what we said we're going to pay you less than Medicare. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's ridiculous. So that's why independent doctors are forced to be more cost efficient. And we are. And we're yeah, still we are. able to give good care. 
If it's something we can't do, well, we refer out to whatever it is we, right. we need to. And when referring out, we look for independent physicians within that specialty that you're referring to, independent yeah. orthopedics or uh, GI, um, uh, gynecology, all of those. Uh, there are independent doctors within those specialties who have gone out and hung a shingle and uh, are doing the same thing we are, providing quality care for a lower cost. Yeah. Uh, examples of, of friends of, well, they're, yeah, they are friends. Uh, we are friends with other independent practices. One of them is Denise. Yeah. What's her last name? Sweeney. Sweeney. <laughs> Dr. Sweeney. <laughs> the uh, obst uh, obstetrician, gynecologist. Mostly, yeah, gynecology Rosa, these days. <laughs> mostly gynecology. Who uh, actually announced to us having seen a patient who was sent to her who got an ultrasound right. at one of the big imaging right. um, networks. And she would have done it in her office for, I believe she said it was one third the cost? Yeah, it was low. It was much And lower. she's actually the specialist who's reading taking care of the problem. As you're, as you're, yeah. Who would you rather have do the reading on it than the person who's actually going to do the operation? Well, and you also are involving fewer people. If you go to the radiologist, you've got the radiologist, the radiology tech, all these people who have to, or say the ultrasound tech, and you have to involve all these people. So obviously the price is going to go up pretty quickly Yeah. Uh, when you're involving a whole other system, a radiology system, rather than just doing it in the office. And uh, gynecologists are very well trained at doing those ultrasounds and looking at, at those things. So they're yeah. they're just as good as a radiologist in that field. So oh yeah, absolutely. That's, that's who you want. They do well. Th they look at them anyway. Yeah. So usually, I, 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 let's use the example of orthopedics. <laughs> oh sure, yeah. So with orthopedics, you get either an X-ray or an MRI of a joint like a knee, say. Mm -hmm. Now, when the orthopedic surgeon goes to operate on it. Are they reading the reading of a radiologist? Okay. No, they're looking at the images themselves, the actual images and deciding what they're going to do when they get in there or, right. or looking at it as they're in there. Right. So yeah, the specialist, uh, yeah. although that doesn't really apply to MRIs and orthopedists so much because yeah. they're not really. So Francis wanted us to. to... Oh, Francis. Yeah. Francis is she out there somewhere. Well, she texted me. She didn't comment. But she said, but she's she not said calling. If, uh, wanted us to talk about the process of getting a referral that you just don't call up your doctor and say, hey, refer me here. What is the process one should go through? Well, yeah, here, here's the thing. You want a referral. In primary care, our job is to do the initial assessment. Now, there, I won't say there isn't ever anything we can't do over the phone. There are things you can. Yeah. Like if a patient goes to the emergency department, they're a regular patient of ours. They go to the emergency department because mm -hmm. an acute injury happened when we weren't open or because they know that they're gonna need imaging because it's so severe. They get the imaging, shows the fracture, and they need, they're told they need to go see the specialist. And we are able to look on our system and see, yeah, her, her fibula broke. We saw it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's comminuted. And yeah, she probably should see the orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. We'll take care of it. So we'll do that. Yeah. Or like a diabetic that needs an eye exam. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll do that over the phone or. Yeah. The routine know, stuff, stuff like, like that. Basic stuff like uh, that. Can I have my mammogram order? Yeah. Why, yeah. Didn't, why didn't you ask for it when you're here for your annual wellness visit? <laughs> and I said, yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> that aside, but if it's something we haven't been working on or, or this, we're doing an annual visit. The person says, oh, by the way, can you take care of this? Oh, and, and also this. And, and after you take care of that, you come back in, you documented everything, got all taken care of. They got their shot that you got for them. And then they say, oh, and can you, like what, what do you think of this? To... No, no, not oh. the referral yet. Here's the thing. Oh, we're not there yet. After all of that. That does happen. Then they bring up something else. Right. And you're like, uh, yeah, well, we've already we'll, we'll been talk, in here. We'll talk about that or minutes. yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> or, you know, cause you're on the way out the door, you know, the other patient's already roomed and you already finished the note and everything. And they're bringing this thing up and you're wanting to be helpful, but you really can't make a note for the, cause we have to document everything we do or the board gets you. If you ever want some entertainment, look at the California medical <laughs> board's publications and at the yeah. back of those quarterly publications, that newsletter that goes out, you can see what people lose their license over. And you know what? Almost all of them say not documenting poor documentation, adequate, poor documentation or not yeah. keeping adequate records. Right. And that's what that would be if we were to practice that medicine after we're all done with the note. We have to go and write another note about it. Yeah. May seem silly to you, but this is reality. And this is why We've we got to document everything. need to take care of things when, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this to work oh, so that oh. if somebody were to call, oh. we could hear we, them. I thought we yeah. had a call. No, we didn't actually have a call. So 
if they do all that and then you get this phone call a couple weeks later saying, yeah, remember we talked about such and such? Can I have a referral for I that? I often don't remember talking about what? it. What? <laughs> because if it's an afterthought, I don't always document it. And it's not going to be the heading for that visit if we yeah, did document right, it. Right, right. Because the heading is going to be annual wellness visit and hip pain or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's something else. Uh, I'm sorry. Right. Where, how did I get off going on, on that? Um, we were trying to road. talk about the process of getting a referral. Oh, the so, process. So okay, typically so. the process is you want to see your primary doctor and get it evaluated. First of all, to see typically. if it needs uh, a referral to a specialist. A lot specialist. of stuff we take care of here. We can do a lot on our own. We can we can do a lot of dermatology procedures. So. Dermatology is the major one. Yeah. 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 And Sometimes they, orthopedics. Say, oh, I want to see a, doc a skin doctor. We can do a lot of those things. Um, we do a lot of it. We can give look yeah, at their joint YouTube injections. Channel. If you're watching this channel, you know we do a lot of dermatology. Uh, joint send injections. Send me to ENT for a ear cleaning. No, uh, you know. Ear cleaning. Sorry, I didn't mean to spit on you. Did I spit on you? No, yeah. you're too far away. <laughs> um, so there are a lot of things. So that's the one thing. To come see us. We like people to come see us because we can usually off the service at a, uh, a, a you know, all in one visit uh, without a referral. Uh, so. Uh, other thing is often um, if a referral is needed, specialists want tests done beforehand, blood yes. work or yes. an x-ray or some kind of imaging. So we can order that up and essentially queue up everything so you're ready to see the specialist. They really appreciate so, seeing our exam. And they do. And, 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 and yeah, and oftentimes, and, and we are kind of a gateway. They don't want to just see anybody for, you know, random stuff that we can take care of when, when specialists are often inundated with more uh, complex things that they enjoy doing. They actually don't want to see a lot of the really basic stuff. Don't want to see stuff we should have been able to take care of. <laughs> right. So a lot of patients will want the specialist for anything Every, having everything. to do with that specialty uh, and, and want the specialist for everything. And no, that's just plain not appropriate. And the specialist doesn't like it either. So we, we are primary care, meaning we do the start of every specialty. Just about. Just about, yeah. Just about. I can't think of anything we don't do. I mean, we do the first part. <laughs> Yeah, at least the workout. Pregnancy, we do the pregnancy test. We tests. do that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see, somebody, so. So what you got there? Uh, people are coming. Your questions and comments. Ding. Brio had, it. Uh, uh, she was wondering, um, so do you have to prove if you're up to date on your skills and practice? Well, yeah. Um, we do need to do CMEs. What's that got to do with referrals? It doesn't. Oh, but okay. but it was, um, we were talking about. Yes, we do. Procedures, I guess. Okay. Uh, yes, we do, and and there are um, actually the medical board um, make sure that we're doing well, the specialty and, board and the specialty well, board. both. So the American yeah. Academy of Family Physicians yeah. for me um, has to. We have to. So we got our state licensure, and that's a lot of that's one hoop you have to go through, and and you mean a certain number continue of medical education, continue medical education, uh, twenty five hours a year, I think it is. Does that sound right? Oh, I think it's more than that. Twenty five for the state, I think it's more, but isn't it fifty every two years? That may be right. And it's a certain number of because um, yeah. we renew uh, every geriatrics. Within, oh yeah, a certain number that. of hours of geriatrics. If a certain percentage in of our your practice aging population. So that's why, <laughs> like every two years, I'm going to a geriatrics right, conference. Yeah, like I'm you always need telling you about you that. what I learned at the last geriatrics conference. Um, yep. And then my specialty is about twelve articles with a test every year. Um, another little patient improvement, practice improvement thing that every five years, I think. And then a major, major examination every 10 years. And that's emergency medicine. I'm still uh, board certified in emergency medicine. Yep. So somebody asks, um, I guess this was when we were talking about orthopedic referrals, why um, do some people order x-rays versus MRIs? Depends on what you're looking at. Yeah, it is. And, and, and often... What, and what um, you know about it. Yeah, and, and often an x-ray is uh, um, quick and easy and will tell us a lot. Yeah. And MRIs, and, and cheap. X-rays are cheap. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get an X-ray pretty quickly, and, um, and MRIs are expensive and not always needed uh, or available in some places. Yeah, yeah, you have to schedule out for that's them true. because and some people don't like going in the little tube. And yeah, that's a scary. problem. So, so some um, people can't go in the tube. They don't fit ferric metals. Oh, <laughs> yes, you're right. Or if they have it's a, a major maker. magnet. So yeah, no, if you have something that's yeah. going to be moving a magnetic field in your body, it doesn't you work. Cannot go uh, in there. That, yeah. well, I mean. It works. Yeah. It just it pulls it right through your body, and well, you know, or pulls it through your heart or something <laughs> like that. So they, they don't do that. Yep. 
So, uh, so typically, you know, people will come in with knee problems. Uh, this, this is where I most often run into this, and probably you too. Uh, I, they come in with a knee problem, and they say, oh, I need an MRI. No, we don't jump straight to an MRI. Some people do. Um, I try not to. Do you jump to a straight to an MRI? No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> okay, if, if, if they've got obvious uh, uh, instability, Oh, sure. You know, the mechanism is, is yeah, appropriate if you look like, for something yeah, that they... But it's pretty rare that that happens. But in it's primary somebody, care, we're not seeing that. That's usually the emergency department. Right, yeah. Um, so, yeah, somebody comes in, they, they injured their knee, and they can walk on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's usually an x-ray. And, yeah. and then if an usually. MRI is needed, it's typically ordered by the orthopedist in, in every right. case. And uh, part of that also is to make sure we get the right test. Sometimes they want a very specific type of uh, imaging study, and, and we don't want to repeat it. So... Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll, oh, yeah, we'll usually just go with an X-ray first, that's, and, and then refer. We've seen that uh, with the so-called open seen. MRI, right? Where the patient is yeah. is um, what's the word I'm looking for? Claustrophobic, and so they don't want to be in that tiny little MRI because those things are very, uh, very uncomfortable. And if you have a degree of of claustrophobia, it can be quite an ordeal. And so uh, they'll use the so-called open MRI, where you're not inside the tiny little tube pipe going through the big machine, it's more open and you can breathe and see and move. And, and then we'll send them to the orthopedic surgeon. The orthopedic <laughs> surgeon will order the closed MRI because yeah, the image quality is imaging, not the yeah. same on the open MRI. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. somebody, uh, Jet Soma said, orthopedic doctors are usually pretty fussy and pretty much says exactly what we did, that they'll order their own imaging uh, anyways because well, they it, want it, their own. It's, <laughs> it's true. If they're going to be operating or not, yeah, they, yeah. they need to know certain information. And somebody open. So I don't know if you call that fussy necessarily. I, <laughs> they know what they need, I guess. Yeah, sometimes you have to do a very, I, even x-rays. Sometimes they'll redo x-rays with a certain, certain view, yeah. a certain view so they or can stress look at something. Or, yeah, yeah, stress views. Right. Or yeah, to make sure they a certain they, angle. And yeah, same thing. I mean, orthopedics are mostly where we see that, but... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we see that in other uh, other places too. Like, well, you'll see it with chest X-rays sometimes. To chest X-rays, um, getting the per at. like a PET scan or something like that for uh, orthopedics, getting the, the proper uh, tumor imaging test, um, or that, that sort of stuff. Uh, oncology. Yeah, oncology. That's what I meant. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, does Francis have any more insights for Francis? You have any insights? <laughs> Is that you, Francis? <laughs> are, are you out there? She, she was just texting me. She's, uh, <laughs> she's not doing it through the normal. She's she's going around the. Um, I guess uh, this person, Catatonics Corner, says his knee What's pops that? out, and they're always getting X-rays. Somebody ordered an MRI, but they just keep doing X-rays. Well, if it pops out, um, yeah, you well, see. Well, first of all, we have no idea what pops out. Yeah, that's a tough thing. When you say it pops out, is that what does that mean? But but that's, that's you need to see yet. an orthopedist. That's really what I would yeah. refer you to an orthopedist yes. after an X-ray. Francis could actually voice <laughs> call. Yeah. But she knows my phone number, so she could actually call. Come on, Francis. And be on the show. If Francis calls, I bet calls, you she's got a nice we deep can hear voice because she's sick. Because she's sick, yeah. So, <laughs> Sorry, Francis. If, Francis, if you did call, you would be on the show. People uh, would hear you right now live. That's what you want right now. I'm sure because you're That's sick. That's probably not motivating her to do it. <laughs> she, she's like, click. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of here. I'm not watching them anymore. <laughs> those, those fools. <sighs> Oh, to yeah. see what my kids are doing. Yeah. All right. Anyways. Well, uh, I, I was going to say a little bit more about the the big business part of it. Sure. That take it away. Uh, it would be against the law for us to receive kickbacks from people we refer to. Oh yes. Right. So it's kind of weird to be to be sending what you know is hundreds of thousands of dollars of referrals to a hospital or a, a particular cardiology group or whatever. You know that they're getting that because of what you're giving them. Yep. You're, you're Any other industry, <laughs> what, what do they call it in other industries? Finder's fees or uh, or, or just commission yeah, or... Yeah. Not in It's okay in other places, but not for us. So, I mean... apparently we're they, the only ones They who like are us and they smile and they shake our hands. <laughs> <laughs> They'll give that's, us like a bag, of, a bag of something at Oh, yeah, at Christmas, Christmas time. <laughs> bag of mandarins, yeah. Bag of mandarins. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep. That's what we get. Yep. But, yeah. uh, you know, the bag of mandarins doesn't determine the referral patterns. That's right. What does determine referral patterns? Well, first of all, competence. Is somebody yeah. going to give the patient good care? Another thing that's a big deal to me, well, I don't know if it's to you or not, but a big deal to me is we have a certain personality here. We're nice to our patients, at least to their face. And <laughs> 
<laughs> until we get on this show and talk about them. Oh, and man. Asking for referrals. <laughs> Jeez. We're nice to our patients. We treat them with great respect. We care about anesthesia. We don't do procedures that hurt patients without doing all we can to minimize that pain. So yep. we're not going to refer to uh, another specialist in town who is known for not using anesthesia and being very gruff with his patients and his staff, yep. his or her. So <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we aren't referring to, to that environment. Yep. Uh, we do tend to refer to the independents that are like us and are more cost effective um, for a couple of reasons. Um, it's the circle we hang out in, so it's kind of the ones who, who are our friends. Doctors, yeah. um, also because of that, we know who's good and who isn't, and we refer to people who are good. Mm -hmm. If we have the choice between somebody who's independent and very convenient uh, and somebody who's good, <laughs> Let's put it that way. We, we go ahead and go with the foundation doctor or the, the one who's part of a big group who's good and protect our patient and get them yes. the best care. Absolutely. Yeah, protection um, so is that's, very important. So that's how we decide who we refer to. I guess that's the title of the show. There you go. That's how we decide. There it is. We put it out there. Now you know. And we don't get kickbacks. No. no because apparently don't. doctors are more inclined to bias than other industries. No. I don't think so. <laughs> well... Maybe because it's health it's, is a different it, thing than it's like, like it's more sacred. It's health. It's so yeah, it's medicine. Yeah, higher that's standard. All right. That's all right. I, we do have a higher. There you go. I like that. There We're better go. than you. <laughs> we are better than you. Whoever you are, finders how, fee people, how, head how hunters. Nice. How nice. Okay. <laughs> we are better. Than we we had we could end the it was, show. It was on going such so, a good note. I mean, we were so there. Well. We had it. All it we had going to do so was well. sign off, oh, and then you went man. and did that. <laughs> uh, but we appreciate you watching. We appreciate those people who like doing the Patreon thing. Like we do. Yeah, Boo Boo Kitty. Thank you. Yes, you thank make you for it happen for poetry, the... Boo Boo Kit Kitty. Yeah. And go check out today's blog. Uh, yeah. If you haven't checked it out, I know Francis liked it. It's and if Francis liked it, you'll like it. I liked it. I did. And I, you liked it. I liked it. It's poetry. I wrote a comment check it out. and I liked it. And, and if you really hate my poetry, leave a comment too. Okay. <laughs> he invited you. And also thank you to Lindsay Antoine. Thank you. And uh, we will... Oh, there is a video coming out that might seem kind of weird. It's actually kind of directed toward doctors. The one about the cardio arm and setting up patients with remote patient management. Yeah. When that comes out, probably Friday, I think. Um, may not be all that interesting to uh, the lay public, but it's, it's for doctors who want to find it. And it's going to be on our channel because it's a medical channel. And that'll get out there. And so that's what, that's what the cardio arm thing is all about. I wish I answer somebody's question. Somebody One question. says, um, well, they're, for, they're in England, so I don't know how it is there. But they ask if, you, if a symptom can cause referral to different doctors concurrently. Yes, and I can give you an example. Oh, please do. I had a patient today who was, had a newly diagnosed cancer, and I referred oh, him to two places. Sorry. One is the oncologist uh, to get the um, uh, treatment started, and also to um, somebody who can do a biopsy to make sure that it is uh, a cancer. So there, there's an example right there. I referred to two people at once. Francis texted me. Did she? Yeah. Oh, man. LOL, I sound like a man. I'm not calling in. <laughs> so you had to read it out Sm loud. Smiley emoticon. So here but it I'm is. supporting you through. Dr. Mark reading it. So oh, you sound I like a man say, anyways. I <laughs> sound like this man. But I'm supporting you through, and I thought I was going to say Patreon. No. Oh, come on. It says through chat. <laughs> or, is she on the chat? No, no, she just No, te this is me. text. That's chat. There's two different things. Francis, we hope you get better. We miss you. And yes, we need you back. We feel bad that you're sick. So Yeah. Everybody does. The whole office. Whole office wishes you were here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Till yep. next time. Dr. Gawain Vaughn. Dr. Mark Vaughn. Stay in good health. See ya.